Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Dark Rooms podcast. I am Ozone being joined by Inky Psychic and underscore as per usual. And today we are doing a Mega Tales episode. And you should totally subscribe. Even mega, if, even if it's your first time episode. listening, we talk about all FNAF things. It's super fun. We do, we do. We cover a right. lot. Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, even, even though it's a Tales episode... Uh, saying that we cover FNAF stuff uh, also reminded me that a lot's been going on with the movie, if we want to touch on that briefly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ozone. Funny news. You know that uh, that movie, um, jo- uh, Block Stocks, we recorded with Johnny? <laughs> Are you in a it's... car? What? Frick! <laughs> Sorry, fan. Uh, what is listen. going on? Listen, listen. Am I fine now? <laughs> yes. You know that Block Stocks we recorded with Johnny? About yeah, the movie? yeah. Uh, wait, was that about the movie? <laughs> Wasn't it about Bobby Dots? Oh yeah, we're doing that movie one with, with someone. You know what, never mind, point's invalid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, so we talked some about the movie answer, that episode. Now can I'm, you answer my question? Are you in a car? <laughs> I'm not in a car. You just had a fan on. <laughs> oh. Some of like what we said. talked about the movie is probably invalid now, in that episode. <laughs> Um, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, there's like just some, there's some more, more child, more, more, ch- some, a bit more child casted. More child. More child. Significantly more child. Yeah, was, more house. There was a blonde one who specifically dyed their hair blonde, and apparently they're a major role. Oh, right. Ooh. Which makes me think maybe it's not a ghost kid. You know? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe there's like a kid that they rescue or something. No, don't, no. Do, don't go there. Um,. I feel like there was, a, I think there was also something else. Uh, I guess I there's think... been like, there's been set leaks occasionally. Uh, like a house in the woods? Yeah, basically. I wonder then, what like, that ooh, is. Yeah. Then they got sniped. <laughs> Understandably so. Mm. And then they, the, um, they yeah, got which, what? They got like, taken down. So, essentially they got confirmed. got sniped. <laughs> essentially confirming that it's probably real. But, furthermore... We got the uh, day one from Blumhouse on Twitter. Oh yeah, which was confirmed to have PJ Hay or no wrong character. Not PJ Hayward. That's the wrong that's William. The, that's uh, the voice. That's the wrong uh, William. Yeah, who's <laughs> the, the wrong after? Who is? It's uh, Matthew Lillard. He yeah. was in that yeah. shot, so we saw William. He had a but they covered tie. his face. Yeah. He had a great tie. It's really, really weird because I was really like, funny tie. I, I w- I was like, I really want to see the face of William Afton, but then I realized, wait, it's just Matthew Lillard. <laughs> <laughs> also, we have three movies. Face reveal, Matthew Lillard. Oh, yeah, the trilogy. Yeah. It's a trilogy now. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, great. yeah, that's the big news. Yeah. I was, I was, I'm going to be real. I, I worried about that for a little bit because it's like, okay, but well, will the first one stand on its own still? But I remember Scott said that he would only yeah. do a trilogy if he thought the first one would do really well on its own. So, I trust that he's just that confident in the script and the movie and everything. We start I filming and then, you, and then he takes it down another script. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just I hope think, nice like, that... a movie trilogy is really good for the series, honestly. It's, it's just... real nice that Blumhouse is handling this, because they, you know, with uh, uh, Megan, they, they're doing so good right now. Yeah, they. that's the thing about Blumhouse, though, is that there's a lot of, like, hit or misses, and I hope FNAF is one of their hits. I guess they never miss. It should be. I think they do occasionally. It, I don't think it can miss under under Scott's um, watchful eye. Yes, honestly. There's also just one other thing. Uh, well, actually, two that kind of go together. I hope the first one doesn't sequel bait. It's okay to like leave something unanswered, but I feel like if it's a blatant sequel bait, that's really risking a lot. Uh, yeah. And also, I worry that it took this long to get a script for one movie. I'm wondering, like, how well put together it will be as a trilogy, because I don't think it was initially written as the start of a trilogy, you know? Honestly, I think, I mean, now that they got, like, the groundwork done, a se- some sequels won't be that far off. Okay, I mean, I, I agree. I actually, uh, now that I, also, I see it all happening, like, I, I have hope for it. Yeah, I, I'm definitely excited. I think they're gonna do great. I just... Yeah. It's... It's one thing to have, like, a standalone movie that does really well and gets sequels. It's another thing to have, like, something that is intended to be written, like, as a trilogy. Like, one story. So, 
is yeah. looking like it's going to be that first route, which I, I'm not super disappointed with, but I feel like if they're going for a trilogy, it would have been cool to like have the story written as a trilogy. You know? I don't know. <laughs> Like That's... planned out, like planned out from the start is what I'm saying. Hey, like, sto stories like, are generally better the, planned out from the start. But the Silver I, I Eyes was well. like written as a trilogy before it was. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm like. I guess we don't. It, technically it, it was know. a trilogy, but it came out one at a time. Hey, crazy question. Crazy if I answer. can interrupt, we have FNAF news. Do we? We have the announcement of a new thing on Book Manager called oh. Five Nights at Freddy's Ticket to. Euphemera? F ephemera? Huh? Ephemera? Uh, it's like two minutes ago. Two minutes ago. Ephemera? Anyways, keep the lights on and dive into up, the terrifying I'm look world. I'm what that is. It sounds Can familiar. I, should ephemera. I read it? Yeah, ephemera. read out the description. Anyways, keep the lights on and dive into the terrifying world of Freddy Fazbear's with an array of fun and frightening collectibles based on your favorite haunted animatronics. Um... It's filled with intriguing secrets and um, homages to fan favorite characters, including Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, Cheek, and more. Um, <gasps> with in world objects, including tickets, yeah. stickers, a badge, a flashlight. It's Logbook 2. Kind of. Jam packed with immersive experimental collectibles that it's provide Logbook an experience two. like no other. Yes! Explore the dark secrets and hidden histories of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza with UV flashlights, puzzles, oh, and more. Oh, yeah. So oh, this could be logbook two. There could be lore. I'm so, so happy. So yeah, after a brief Google search, uh, and that really adds up with what you what you read. Basically, like this ephemera stuff is like little little bits and collectibles that are like short term. Like like a good example would be like you mentioned a ticket. It's like oh, oh this is like a ticket. It's like it's not useful anymore, but it, it's like ooh, a little collectible. What's it's interesting? Be, like, a bunch of Freddy's stuff. UV flashlights, puzzles, and more under the category of hidden stories. Oh, great. Lovely. Oh. Are we going to get blacklight? Because I love to be some blacklight. We're in uh, Journal 3, Gravity Falls. <laughs> Wait, this is insane. Yeah. That is, that you guys don't even news. understand the gravity of the situation. This I is think insane. I do. I just this is set for October of this year. Long book 2. I, I don't care. I have such a complicated relationship with that logbook. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about getting another one. I just hope yeah, it's a little bit more... I hope it at least doesn't cause as fiery of debates. Oh, I oh, mean, please. I think I think Scott learns his lesson. I think logbook I... failed. He, this is going to be good. Logbook failed? Frights was a big... I mean, failed to convey whatever the big well, puzzle was. I mean, at least we got Cassidy no, from the logbook. We got the name well, Cassidy. Mostly it's the check marks and the foxy grid. Uh... That's well, I mean. okay, that is still a mystery, if it is intended to be a mystery, but, like, we still got a lot from the logbook, I think. We did. I, the, the point is, the logbook could have done more, so now we have this, Frights was cool but messy, and now we have Tails, you know? he. I think he steps it up and, and fixes it. I can kind of uh, get behind that pattern. Story. You're making some sense. I just dropped that image in a chat and just spammed logbook two, logbook two, <laughs> all caps. So we've got a, a new book news out of the way. We've got the movie news. Do we want to jump into tales stuff? Sure. Indeed, we do. So we have talked about subacanophobia very recently. Uh, we've talked about all the stories in two separate episodes, but there's one thing we haven't talked about yet, and that is epilogue number four. So. Has everyone read that? Yes. Oh, yep. really know Refresh. What they all blend together. But if someone starts it, they do blend get it. together. Does don't anyone want to give a very brief summary? Because I will. Yeah, this one was really cool. So basically, we have uh, our main characters splitting up into two groups: um, one with Joel and Wade, and the other ones with the other four survivors. Um, you already know they're gonna die. <laughs> Hope. No, Hope's dead. Yeah, it's Hope's dead. Yeah. Um, oh, Lucia. Long dead. Adrian. Kelly and, and Jace. And Jace, right. Those four, they're on... So basically, they're off in the area. They're like, okay, listen, we're going to find um, a radio. We're going to fix it to call for help. Wade and, Wade and Joel are like, we're going to find a way to escape. So they go to this room, and, they, and Joel finds a ladder with, like, a fan vent. And he looks up, he's like, okay, I see sunlight. There's a way out. However... The fan's moving too fast, so he's like, what am I going to do? So he decides, 
he's like, okay, Wade, go. And Wade's like completely messed up because, you know, he, he liked Hope and Hope's now dead. Um, and he's like, go, lure the robot here, we'll escape. And the Wade's like, oh, I don't really know, sure. He's like, do it. And they're like, okay, I'll do it. So, what happens next is, I'm going to I'm gonna do the two separate stories like separately. They, they go back and forth between them. They do. But I'm going to start with Wade and Joel. Um, Wade goes and he gets to the kitchen and the lights flicker. So he runs out there and then he runs to another area. I don't remember where it is, but basically the robot's coming after him. So he dives into the pile of dead bodies. Ugh. As you do. Not and, as you do. <laughs> and then when he hears the robot at the stage, he gets up, he runs back to the room, lights flicker, and Joel's like, okay, now's my chance. So he starts climbing up, and Wade's screaming for help because the robot's caught up to him, and the robot's killing him. And Joel's like, well, sucks to be you. So he climbs into the fan, but he can't get all the way through. The he robot... failed to mention why they needed the robot by the fan. Right, because whenever the robot's around, things short circuit. Um, so like the robot has an effect on like electricity and stuff. And... Basically, when the robot leaves, the fan turns on, and Joel is inside of it, and he gets chopped to bits. That he does. Which, honestly, he kind of deserved it. Let, let's be honest. It is karma. Um, Slowly, it, it's, I like how it's kind of... It, it felt more realistic than, than just, like, usually if, like, someone dies in a fan, it's, like, almost instantaneous, where it's like, oh, they got... Ooh, like, vaporized almost by how fast that's yeah. moving. But, like, he had to, like, it was the startup. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't just, like, he had to, it was digging into him over and over. Yep. Yeah. Um, Up to bloody bit. With the group of four, because now there's only four left, so our main group, they can't get the, um, the radio working, so they're freaking out. And there's a lot of talk about Kelly and how she's, like, kind of weird, um, Ellie is a little, little, little odd. Off. Um, and she doesn't seem to be like enjoying it, but she's definitely not phased by it. Yeah. Um, and it also talks about how Lucia has like things are better for her since Hope is dead, and she feels guilty about that. <sighs> yeah, it's a bit weird. That that's an amazing part of writing for me. I agree. Like, I think that's. Such a good touch to the story. That was pretty neat. So yeah, they're just. What are we gonna do? That's um, it. let's talk about the what we learn about the endo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. What's the cool oh, guys? Our boy Mr. Mimic. Can't talk about <laughs> Mr. Mimic. It's Our a boy Pokemon Mr. Now. Mimic. Mr. Mime. I'm so mad that we can't talk about the fifth book. Come on. Underscore. Shut up. What, I you know why? I told you guys. I do I know why. Yeah. Told you so. Before this episode started, <laughs> I I said that at one point during this episode, underscore would be like, "Let's talk about the fifth book, please." Look, listen. This is the one book you need to break on. This is the no. one exception. This is the of of any books one. of any of them. This is the one to avoid because of how I mean, important it is. They've well, already kind of broken on it because they've been spoiled already. Well, yeah, yeah. because people are uh, like really. Yeah, I'm not this gonna one, That's it. why this one's so big. We can't get yeah, into it, but that. we have it's our thoughts annoying. on leaks. Ah, it's incredibly but, annoying. Um, and, uh, underscore, shut up. Uh, the <laughs> Endo is called Mimic. <laughs> the Endo is called Mimic. I like so, their name for it. However, there were also two two models of the Mimic. I right? don't know which one it is. Um, that is true. But who who do we think even built them? Like, what is the mimic? Like, where did this come from? Was it in the FNAF Six location? Like, what? Bear in mind, whatever type of endo this is, has an instruction manual in the FNAF Six location for some reason. I th- and now no, hmm. let me expand. Sorry, the this instruction manual they find is for all different types of endos, not just the mimic. However, it is in there. Right. Yeah. So what is it? Who built it? Where did it come from? It seems to be just a multi-purpose endo because if you think about it, it makes sense. Like some animatronics are different sizes, and to have to like custom make endoskeletons like and have so many backups for this specific model, it would make sense that there would be one that's like kind of like adjustable to whatever it needs to be. Does anyone here think it's maybe a springlock suit? Because I see a lot of people thinking it's a springlock suit. I. Which I'm not sure about. I'm not sure. I don't know. You'd think we'd have heard. Well, it's it. definitely not a Springlock suit. 
it's it, it could be the endo part of the spring lock suit, but I'm not I, sure. Hmm. The thing about is that, that a... is that like, can you really separate those? Mm hmm. You can because scoop it. the whole the whole thing about the spring locks is that they fasten the endoskeleton parts to the sides of the suit. Right. So the yeah. uh, so the um spring lock parts would be what in like the most core inside. Um. I'd or say so. Basically, they... my my thought process with this, I'm not sure if it's a spring lock suit, because I don't know if this is just my understanding, but how I see spring lock suits is that they're endos that if you, like, crank it up, it can, like, open like a bear trap it i don't think yeah. i think that's i think that's about yeah. all it can do i don't think it can like shift yeah. its sizes and everything to add on to that um i feel like this endo or the mimic is like very heavy and like very call like, it clunky it's tech is solid clunky. and it would be kind of like hard to move around with that <laughs> uh well, in, in like the suit i would agree but if you think about it we really have not seen many spring lock animatronics in suit mode or not suit mode uh animatronic mode we've I'm only gonna read up we've really on only seen how it, in suit mode i'm gonna really need to read up on i mean except how for the time looks... when that kid got absolutely chomped by that animatronic mm, True. Took a in fight. robot I'm gonna, mode i'm gonna read up what it looks like to get spring locked in um that tail story which one is it pressure yeah i'm gonna read up on pressure and just see the description of his like final ultimate spring locking and see what it sounds like all right so yeah, I'm I'm not super sold on the idea that it's a spring lock suit. Um, one thing that I kind of, that kind of popped into my head. Um, do we think that Endo O2 from FNAF 2 could be a, a mimic model? Hmm. Say that again. Do we think that Endo 02 from FNAF 2 could be some form of mimic model? Because it doesn't seem to like fit any of the FNAF 2, right? Um. The Endo 2 does have a description. I'm not sure. There is a description. See, what's for catching it. me? What What's like catching me off guard here is like the name Mimic. Like, what's that got to do with it? What's it well, mimicking? It's mimicking you know what I mean? whatever it needs to. Like, yeah. it adjusts to whatever suit it needs well, to be. Right. Well, okay. That, that does make sense. It mimics behavior. Does I it? mean, it's it's smart. It is evading these people. I guess you it, could it have a virus, smart, but. Yeah. It is I, generally smart. If there's I, no virus there, that's phenomenal. That is that is good. I mean, I, I, I do agree. Um, it is definitely taking its command very seriously and will do... It will solve problems in order to carry out that command. Yeah. I don't think there's a virus yet because we still haven't seen it, its eyes be purple or something, which seems to be the whole burn trap thing. Did eyes change color mid-story? I don't know. I I think I I feel like they did, but I feel like it, it was. They weren't purple. They were like yellow and green or something. It was yellow to orange, I think. Yellow or, to orange or something. I, I I remember orange specifically. Orange yeah, was yeah, one yeah. of the colors. I don't know I don't about know. the other one. All right. So yeah. the question is: Is this becoming burn trap? Oh, do we still believe in that? I think eventually, maybe. Um, the rabbit ears are a little I think, too conspicuous to ignore. I think he can be mm -hmm. whatever he wants to be. I mean, technically, As long yeah. as he tries hard enough. Yeah, it's probably... I don't, think he has to try, I, I don't think he has to try very hard. Now, this still does beg the question, what is Mimic 2 then? Or I mean, is, what is Mimic 1 then if this is Mimic 2? You know what I mean? What's the other oh, yeah. one? What's the other one? Okay. Oh, um, probably not someone too. No. Well, it could be. No. It could be how we. They're have, not endos. Like, I feel. It, I mean. First I think the point. only the only other thing as far as endoskeletons that we have to go off of is that there is endo zero one and endo zero two. I can't think of anything else that would connect to. Yeah. So maybe it would be something similar to that. Maybe they are. Like I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how well this would hold up, but I maybe Endo Zero One and Zero Two are mimics. Those just don't look like they're capable of really expanding. I could maybe see two, but not one. They're just steel frames. Yeah. Um that's a good point. Yeah. Uh <laughs> but it could be we've we never don't know. heard of the word mimic ever. These have to be something right. we've never seen. Unfortunately. It's just yeah. The detail about the- if there was only one, I'd say, like, yeah, this is absolutely just kind of a new thing. The fact that there's two, and we don't really know which one this is, and we don't know the importance of the other one, 
makes me think it might connect to like what we already know about the endos is what that there were Glamour two models endos are just mim all mimics um i think maybe and there could be multiple Perhaps. kinds of glam rock endos hmm because if you think about it like you know they're like the, the the endos look like Glamrock Endos, or at least Burn Trap does, and I think he has parts from them, right? So like, and you know, like these are like more high tech robots than we've seen in the past, because like you know they have like personalities and stuff. It seems like they can actually think, which is weird. So I mean, why... AI, it's getting there already. A premise I can imagine would be that they find said burnt weird Endo. Take it, which of course they do take it. We know that Fazin takes it and then eventually brings it back to the Beatsplex. But anyways, they take it and they use its model design to make the Glamrocks, basically. And that's why it has parts that we see on Glamrock Endos, but it's slightly different still because it was like the first. That. Not getting parts from them. Yeah. Does that work? It could. I think so. Hmm. Okay, that's not bad. It was the first Glamrock Endo, technically, or just whatever they based it off. Yep. We we do have Glamrock Endo blueprints in Security Breach. We should look at them. Just what so. if there's like a hidden little mimic note? Yeah, maybe there maybe there's some design details that we I'll could. I'll take a look at the Glamrock Endo skeleton. <laughs> All right. So with that said and done, let's move on a little bit. Um, where do we think the epilogues are going? Because we have at least five more left, and we have four people left. So, how is that going to add up? It's got to shake up the formula. I already want it to. I found Epilogue 4 just to be kind of okay. It's kind of starting to lose me because of how it's just kind of... They're running. Same they now. need to get out. Dies. They're running. They need to get out. Dies. It's like, uh, And you know that like the main characters aren't going to die. Like the group. Now that we have the group of four, it's like... Yeah, everyone else is doomed from the start. Like As soon as they split up, it's like, okay, so Wade and Joel are going to die. Like... I think he's gonna die last epilogue. Who's gonna live? Lucia's gonna live and Kelly's gonna live. Yeah, I feel like Adrian's but gonna Kelly's like. Kelly's pretty sus. Yeah, uh, that's why I think Kelly's gonna live because Kelly's. Kelly sus. might betray them or something. I don't know. I don't know how Kelly fits into all of this, but she seems to know more. Maybe I don't know. It's hard I mean, to read. She's. I think that's. Kelly that's... is Eleanor. No, uh, Eleanor. <laughs> um, Do you wanna? <laughs> I, I think she's this. being purposely written as hard to read. Which, you know, makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think Adrian will probably sacrifice himself for the others to get away at some point. Maybe Jace too. Yeah, I think there could be a sacrifice. I, th I think Lucia is going to survive. Or at least yeah. be the last one alive before she dies. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I agree. They, they do seem to be, like, very um, explanatory on, like, her guilt and stuff like that. It's it's kind of like from her perspective mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she's the main character. What else was I gonna say? Um, <laughs> hey, the uh, endos are referred to as new generation uh, uh, test chassis. I think. Interesting. I so they're that could be... tested. NGT endos. <laughs> Edgy. Interesting. Okay, so assuming they're like a test endo, maybe if we extrapolate it on that, it could be that they're adjustable, but that's a bit of a leap. I don't know. Mm, yeah. Especially because they're called Mimic in the instructions in the epilogue, so it would probably be on there if it was the same thing. Okay. Well, will these epilogues tie into other stories like the Stitch Race Stingers did? Or are they just, is it just going to be its own story that ties into Security Breach? Like, what's the problem with that? I hope it does both, honestly. Yeah. Like, just cement Tales games even more. You know what the... I could see happening? Yeah. You know what I could see happening? What? Since it does seem like it's going pretty fast, like, there's, like, four, four characters dead already, that's half of them, I could see, like, an epilogue six, maybe, like, two of them getting out and then coming back after the Pizza Plex is opened and, like, tying into other stories. Maybe. Or maybe all four of them get out. Who knows? Yeah, all four maybe of them. we're done with maybe we're done with deaths for now. Yeah, maybe See. all four of them get out and they're like, okay, listen, the pizza place is open. Things are going bad there. We need to get back in there. They and have to. Them. They have to know about what's underneath. Yeah, or like whatever. Yeah. 
I, I think we're done with death for now. I, I think it's going to move somewhere else. See, I hope the so, weird anyway. thing is that by the start of Frights, even in Epilogue 1, we already had a connection to um, to be to beautiful. Be yeah. Yet these ones have established their continuity and not connected to anything else. And the even weirder thing is there is continuity outside of the epilogues. There's all these things that mention the roller coaster and AR booth and VR booth and role play and Freddy Tubes. They're all connected, yeah. the yet they're still plus. not connected to this one which but yeah very interesting it's either he's keeping things down low or well based on the timing those are all around the time when it's constructed and this is when it's not it's still framework maybe maybe the epilogues will provide context in the early pizza plex days that will somehow retroactively make a lot more of the uh, tales make sense like maybe yeah. it could maybe they discover something that's like the reason why all these things go wrong or something like that some sort know. of virus or thing or whatever we we can only hope and dream that one of them ends up going down to the FNAF 6 location down to the, Mike's office but aren't there a bunch of bodies on top of that vent now um uh oh maybe <laughs> <laughs> that down shoot is oh, yeah. covered with death. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of funny people. There's a lot of them gonna die. Mm. Well, a lot of them already. So, died, anything else in the epilogues? Um, uh -huh. or should we move on? They I, they either I think by the sixth epilogue because that's where it kind of like switched up in in frights. Also, sorry for the background noise. My roommate just left very loudly people of the episode i'm sorry for that um basically i th i could see them either halfway through the epilogues either going deeper or getting out and coming back i mm. think Ooh. i think it's got to be one they either they either go down deeper or they get out and come back i think that's the only two things that could happen yeah i think stuff. they'll go down deeper mm -hmm. I, I i hope they do yeah well, hope's dead, so I don't know what that's gonna... <laughs> there is no hope. The other thing is, like, we have nine books confirmed. Um, yeah, there's, like, so many... That, we got that leads, us, I that leads that. us to November. Wow. Uh, and Ruins that one to come out this year. By the way, that one weird thing I mentioned is set for October. That weird collection of items. So it's just before Tales is gonna end. Well, just because we have nine confirmed, we don't know if it's going to end there. I doubt it's going to end at nine. Yeah. I do not. You don't think so? so we'll, we're getting at least I think 12. It, it, could. Like, it could. It could. But we're getting at least 12. I think, I think it's going to be more, like, good. I think he's not going to take it too far. What and if we got more than 12? We'll nine. I will, I'll bet we'll end I, at nine. I think, I think it'll be 12. Dang, gosh dang, I'm all, I'm alone. I, I I'm willing to I'm willing to consider. Like a nine I, I feel like nine is not a terrible stopping point. I've got I've got faith he's gonna end at nine. I feel like if it goes beyond twelve, it'll be a bit drawn out. We can't go more than frights. Certainly not. No. I I and I like I like twelve as a number, I think. Even That's if they do, like, the scrap stories again, that would be kind of cool. I don't that know. That would be cool. That would be rather neat. <laughs> anyway. And then after Frights, we, after, get after, after Tales, we get another 12-book series. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, I've got one more question. Do we prefer these epilogues to the Frights? I do. Epilogue 1, yes. Uh, the rest, no. I, hmm. I agree. I actually like the Frights epilogues more so far, yet when the big reveal or conclusion hits in Tales, I'll probably like them more. That's a good point. Yeah. So far, I just liked the progression of Frights' epilogues a bit I, more. I, I think the Tales epilogues feel very, very cinematic. Yeah. Yes. I, I th think they definitely do a lot better at maintaining, like, a consistent, like, a consistently paced yeah. story. Because, like, if you think about the Frights epilogues as individuals, 
like a lot happens usually every time so it can get you excited and it makes it more memorable overall but when you view it as a larger whole it seems very scattered and all over the place i think it's the opposite with this where it's like yeah to me this feels like kind of like a movie kind of it, like, yeah. it has like, kind yeah. of like like we said like that cinematic feel. I I think that when when it's all done, this will be a better story as a whole than Frights was. I agree. That's sort of like I'm so, it's sort of saying that it has like they're like opposites. Where individually, Frights had much more engaging and memorable ones, but as a whole, it was kind of all over the place. Tales has kind of slower and kind of boring-ish individual epilogues that I feel will come together very well as a larger story once it's done. Mm -hmm. I I think these perspective switches that they're doing are very, like, subtle, and it's kind of easy to... Because you're always, like, staying in the same location, the same topic, but also, like, there's the opposite of that, which is like, oh, it's getting kind of boring and drawn out because they're always doing the same thing. I but think like, it's like I, I think oh, it's sorry. it's very cinematic in that aspect. Hmm. I think it's but gonna yeah. be good. I forgot what I was gonna say. Sorry. <laughs> do we have do we have more for tales? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, do we do we want to move on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is gonna be fun. Um, <laughs> I don't sound so sure. Uh, yeah. I have eight. I don't have eight. Uh, I don't. I have eight questions, uh, and we can go through them in any order because they're really, really random. So, uh, random uh, psychic, questions. psychic, yeah. choose a, a number between one and eight. Uh, eight. Okay. Well, we're starting off with frailty. So, what is the explanation for frailty if? Stitchline games isn't true. What's the repercussions of that? Um, Frailty cannot be canned to the games. So you, you think it would be set in like the Fazbear Frights world, and it would be kind of like an epilogue? It have to be. be beautiful. I don't know. Well, then, yeah, look. then it wouldn't resolve anything with Eleanor. Uh, yep, it would just be additional. Because right. she just shows up and doesn't have any resolution, so I don't think it's like an epilogue for Frights. Like the reason I'm asking this question is because frailty to me feels really isolated from the rest mm-hmm. of the stories. It's also the first story in the series, so we might get clarification later. But I don't know. I mean, same thing happened with all three stories in the first book for frights. So perhaps Jessica mm. is just Kelly, but later. <laughs> Imagine that would be wait. That would be interesting. If Kelly is revealed to have like a pendant or something, or a necklace or whatever. Oh. What does um what does the what does the girl in frailty regret? What's her name? Um Jessica. 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 Do I don't Jessica. think we is ever really I don't think we ever Jessica. really find out. Is that I a think... real name though? Possibly. Um What does she regret? Leading her friends into a death trap and <laughs> Freddy Fit. <laughs> no, uh no, um, I think I don't think we're ever explicitly told, but yeah. she seems to break down whenever she starts putting her own needs before others. So she's obsessed with serving others. So something probably happened to people she cared about, where she ended up having to save herself and has survivor's guilt or something. That and was it's using that's yeah, the uplogs end. Yeah, that one would girl be, getting out. That would be interesting. Hmm. If they did that, it would be really cool because it would like tie the entire series together in one big loop. Like the that. only thing is, I was just like, oh, and she got out and changed her name to Jessica. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, skip on to uh, another different question. Or is that all we have to say for that? Oh, okay. That's that's. Probably I mean, good. it's it's just like a, a thing that's sticking out to me at the moment, and I'm still kind of sus on what's going on there. Yeah, because it right. does seem very Eleanor related. Definitely, yeah, certainly. And I, it is one of my favorite stories in Tales, so I, I'm kind of pretty good. very, very eager to see what happens with it, if ever, if anything. It would be really weird if it just is never brought up again. Um, does anyone hate the Leaf Stick Line game? I'm, uh, it's probably going to be true. I am 
undecided. I I'm back at that. I'm back at that FNAF theorizing point where I just don't have an opinion. I just like take what what people are saying. Yeah. And, like look let at, me feed you. Look at evidence. I suppose. Let some, me feed some key, you. key info. Okay. I have right. some. I have some some info that might make people a little more inclined. Oh no. Does anyone remember Fazbear Fright's original name? Ooh, I do not. I feel like I knew it. But it's like, it was is going it the to be Lost Tales or something. It was going to be Twisted Tales. Oh. And now we have Tales from the Pizzaplex, and Tales is looking to be quite canon. So you'd think Frights would also be somewhat canon to that Maybe? if they're both canon tales. But I, I think someone who would refute that could say that that point kind of falls apart because the name was changed. Like, if it is supposed to be connected, he, then why would they change the name from Tails to something the else? The name was changed because he couldn't get the copyright for Twisted Tales. Disney oh, owns it. Oh, really? That's why it's not called Twisted Tales. Fascinating. Ah. So, so he, put, he slapped Fazbear on it, and he went, like, Fazbear Frights, we, know we, yep. know we, have that. we know we have the rights to that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah, I think but, it's a better uh, name. Let's, let's, Disney let's, owns Twisted Tales. Makes that's, sense. It's a very that's, generic name. That's about it. Also, the marketing really seems to hint that Frights and Tails are like super connected. So, yeah. it's just tricky to determine yeah. how how meta that is. Like, I don't is Scholastic really like talking about the lore, or is it just like, yeah, this is another FNAF book series? Like, uh, it's it's like catch up on Frights before Tails. It's like you might need to read Frights before you read Tails. Interesting. Sort of, sort of implications. Which goes back to like frailty because like I was gonna show my friend. I, I was gonna suggest uh, the first Tales book to my friend who doesn't, who isn't like majorly in the FNAF community. And uh, well, it's like, an interesting place to start considering it's. The, I know. Yeah, and I was the like, robot, like, no, like the because... robot scrap girl Lally and yeah, cancer but apocalypse. Cancer, like, I, I thought Tales 1 was, like, so freaking good, and I was, was like, here, read this. But then I realized, like, you kind of need to read To Be Beautiful before you read Frailty. I think you need uh, to read Or else any you have FNAF no idea who you, this endo is. You need to, like, you need to read any FNAF book before, before Lally's game. Oh my okay, gosh. dude, okay, okay. Like, I love the book, don't get me wrong, but, like, as a starter, you're gonna, like... Well, I'm gonna prove you wrong. So, so, so your friends, your friends exposure to FNAF is going to consist of a little guy in a box, a, a janitor girl who falls apart, and Cancer Apocalypse. That's going to be their oh, perception of cancer FNAF. Cancer Apocalypse. That's, the Jelly Babies are going to be the primary antagonist for them. Uh, Alright. Just well, like everyday had, life. Of course. You had jelly babies. eight things. What were right. they? Right, so, underscore, choose a number between one and seven. Three. Man, he okay. Was so, Cleithrophobia has given us a really, really cool uh, insight on the Pizzaplex map and everything. Uh, yeah. And it also showed us the dome filled with smoke. But, has that changed our interpretation of under construction in any Ooh, way? No, not really. I think it just... <clears throat> so... Not really. I think it... Not, not majorly. Before it was like, okay, it might end with her in a coma or something. Now I think, like, her body is probably dead, but her consciousness is still in that forever, like, liminal... It's, yeah. It's, like, it's one of two things, yeah. She's either liminally in this thing, or she's in a coma in the hospital. Either way, she's I, not making it. I seem to remember, like, two theories that were going around, which and one of them was, like... Uh, she's in this simulation, dead, uh, like her soul goes on forever or whatever in this void. It's and the other loop. one was like, to do with like, the blob is like cancer kind of. Um... It, was a, it was a parallel to how it... Princess Quest works. How Casty oh, yeah. gets assimilated-ish in Princess Quest. I seem Quest to remember there were multiple loop. interpretations. There was, the, there was the cancer theory that like the, the AR like brought like, either gave her cancer or something, or brought out cancer, I don't know. I personally like that theory, or, like, it, it, the reason is cancer because she has, like, a brain tumor or something. Maybe not yeah. Maybe not from the machine, but just, like, it got brought out. I don't, I, I guess it's not impossible, but I don't really see anything to suggest it, especially now that it's, like, not very hospital-related. It's more so, like, she's still in that smoking dome. <laughs> either way, it's we don't need just... to fret over it. 
too it much. It's literally just cope for me because otherwise I think it's very distasteful to use cancer. It's what the, what's nice about this story is that it doesn't matter too much because it's all in her head anyways. So regardless of what happens to her, you know, like it's it's not gonna have the biggest impact on a timeline sort of sense. She just something unfortunate happens, right? Yep. And, and yeah. the dome's probably shut down. Oh, definitely. But not the VR dome. I it's think still up we and can assume that anything that like majorly impacts the world isn't. If someone died there, it's probably not in security breach. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, think of it this way. Like, we've gotten loads of stories in the in the, the Pizzaplex, right? The the central Pizzaplex of Tales, and all of them have died. And we don't see those locations in security breach. So these are the reasons right, yeah. it's been shut down. <laughs> that that just that just made me realize that isn't uh some mechanophobia's guy technically the only only protagonist to get out unscathed. Has he been? Well, uh, it depends on what you think the ending of Animatronic Apocalypse means, but yeah. I was yeah. I was gonna say uh, I, I was gonna bring that up. Like that's why I said unscathed and not. We alive. were still split on whether he's evil at the end or not. I I think he is gone. I think he's evil. He's gone. His mind's gone. He became he's the president. Evil. He's gone. Oh, I don't want to have this debate. Ah, the, this is so funny. It's the curse. This... It's the curse. Everyone who is the president adopts this mindset and like either goes missing or goes insane. Like, yeah, he's, Obama? By the he's not. He's not out of the woods. He wouldn't joke about it. The, like it can't be a joke what he said because he just survived this horrifying. He got taken over by the black goo and yeah, he stabbed him. Yeah, but... Yeah, but Inky, we have to survive the animatronic apocalypse. See, now Ozone is confirmed evil. We have to kill him. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. I have the same, this same freaking conversation over whether someone thinks this or that on my server all week, except it's whether Bonnie's blue or purple. It's so funny. The, the disparity between those two colors. Like, is this guy going to die or become a horrible, like, insane leader? <laughs> Or not. Anyways, or is I'm, Bonnie blue or purple? <laughs> I'm gonna insert my own random question I just thought of, okay? Just randomly. If the AR booth was what we saw, what does Tiger Rock have to do with the VR booth? Um, doesn't it say that, like, he, he can't get the song out of his head? Or it feels like someone follows him home. He feels yeah. like the tiger has stuck with him. I think it's probably gonna be, like... Okay, hear me out. This is going to sound crazy, but I'll tell you what which concepts I'm bringing from each book. I feel like it's going to be a combination of Dance With Me and Kids At Play. Dance With Me. <laughs> yeah, Kids at, play. Kids at Play. Because I feel like it's going to be that like whole like something technically intangible is following them. Like I feel like they're going to be the only ones that see the Tiger Rock because they... They were exposed to the VR. It's probably an after image in their eyes or something. Like it has oh. impacted their brain directly. So I think it's going to be like appearing all around them, like kids at yep. play, okay. something like that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um. Let's move on. All right. Uh, I'll be right back. I need to uh, grab something. Inky. All right. Inky, pick a number between one and seven. Uh. Ooh, that's a good question. Let's Excluding say. Excluding three. I already did three. Well, I think he's he's shrinking down the number. He's yeah, no, I'm I'm shrinking. I'm shrinking. Yeah. All um, right. Beep beep beep. We'll do, do five. We'll do five. Either way, five. We'll just do five. Okay, this is a very simple one, um, because I I kind of like put a put the question out there like ask us questions on my server. So, Faker the game maker asks, what of our favorite tale stories and funny Ooh. Whitby. So, well, no, it's funny white boy, sorry. <laughs> funny white boy. Funny Whitby? <laughs> I typed it out wrong, I don't know why. Uh, funny Whitby. white boy asks, who are your favorite Tales characters? Oh, that's so, a good question. Should we go through... Favorite story, two... then characters. I need to look at them again. I mean, mine probably is Animatronic Apocalypse, but if not, I would probably say... Help Wanted? Or... On the oh, this is I don't know, tough. that, that would be good. I'm gonna pull up a Tales list of Tales. From I've done that as well. Stories. Uh, let me just throw some into. S I think real character's quick. gonna be easy, but story might be a bit hard because there's such I, good hitters. I think character for me is probably Abe. Honestly, I think he's very relatable and sweet. And Which one is of, Abe again? He's Bobby, Bobby Dots. Dots. 
Um, I, I think he's yeah, very relatable and it was fun. Cool. Yeah, he, he's he's uh, fun. Yeah. Frailty lines even disappointed. I will throw out a curveball, just a random one. I really like the main character of Pressure. I like oh, how he is, he is an good. epic, insane Super. theorist, and how he does a cool thing while he's dying, and you know stops a, a, d a dude from harassing a small child. So that's cool. This is true. This is true. To put it lightly, yeah, thwarting predators is a really cool thing to do. He does do that, and it's sick. And he dies like he dies happy ending, despite dying. He goes out in a blaze of glory, if you will. I just uh, threw together a tier list. However, now your game's your favorite. Well, I don't know if S is ordered. It's just those are my S tier stories. Can you link this? However, I yeah, do I love the the mermaid for obvious reasons. <laughs> oh my god! The minor goodness. character, like just the <laughs> mentioned in like two love lines. The mermaid for select uh, reasons. Oh my gosh. See, I, I would say Rose, but they reduced her chest size. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you know who they didn't do that to? The mermaid. Oh, <laughs> they never, they never, oh my gosh. In fact, oh. she got more on the cover. This is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible news. Um, so, Man. I guess... Okay. What would my favorite be? I think it's gonna be... Either... Lally's game, frailty, or animatronic apocalypse. Any one of those three, I'm gonna make depending a list on the day. Real quick. I I just I really like all three. I love all three of the first story books. Um, and then some mechanophobia is extremely good, and animatronic apocalypse is even better. So, um, I will say none of them go below B, as you can see on my little tier list that I whipped up. That's cool. Um, I think Somnophobia is the weakest, followed by Haps, but, you know. I can't wow. believe no one's putting B7 in, like, F. I hate B7 so much oh, with B7 the brain great. I hated I, I it enjoyed. before we got the art, but I still kind of hate it. I enjoyed B7. I, I imagined him in it's a very icky. grotesque and horrifying way, and I like Yeah, that. and that's what's... Ugh. Like, I would be terrified of him if I saw him in person. Which I almost feel bad about saying, but, you know, <laughs> that's kind of, like, the path he went down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, as for protagonist, um, or character, specifically, favorite characters. Yeah, character. Um, I think... Ooh, that's good. I, I like Jessica from Frailty. Yeah, Jessica's very well written. Um, it's gonna be Jessica, or... Uh, friggin' Lally's game, Cade. Because I still think he's... I I don't know if I'm still on Team Lally isn't real. People have... People have it's, fought me. It, and it's it's become a little harder to defend. But it, Cade it, is still in on it 100%, and his mom is too. He kills people. Lally is also there. <laughs> it's funny you should say that, because that's one of my questions, so... Oh, gosh. Oh, whether I, whether do, you still, do you still... You still believe that Lally is split personality or real or whatever? I think Lally comes from Cade, but it's hard to justify that it's not an actual thing. And yeah. it's hard to say he's just a split personality. I think he originates from Cade. He's like some manifestation of Cade's envy and memories and everything. But I can't really argue that he's not a physical thing anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, here, boy. All right, I made two lists. As, as like much him. as I, as much as I still love that interpretation of the story more than just ag uh, Lally's an agony creature, because mm -hmm. that's just that just feels super basic. The only reason we're asking this is because I guess that people, uh, the eyes or the shadows or whatever at the end has thrown people off. Yeah. Dude, yeah. there's my tier list. You put all three of the first three stories in S. I did. I loved the first book uh, I mixed so it much. Up a bit. I actually put most of the first stories in B, the lowest. I like how this has just base. casually become a, a tier list episode. Yes. I cannot wait till we do our four part. Yeah, this will be, be such a good tier list video. It will. Okay, okay but we're, we're, let's get off the tier list. <laughs> yeah, well, what's that well, for? Well, wait, wait, long... Did Psychic did Psychic and Underscore say their favorite yeah, I was, characters? I was or... going to say Psychic oh. Underscore. Favorite story and favorite uh, character. 
Oh, I, I think I, I think I really loved Pressure, and I yeah. loved the main character of Pressure. However, I did love the mermaid. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we did talk about this already. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for allowing me to say that again. Ah, uh, yes, he just, he just had to say it twice. Of course. Like it? I don't know if I have a favorite. Come it's, on, it is, there's, it there's is such good ones. Yeah. There's got to be like something you like more than the All others. All of them are, are good, they too but hard? I, I'm looking at the list and I'm like, can I pick any of these out as a favorite story of mine? Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, they're all really good. Oh, what are your what are some of your favorites then? Bobby Dots is good. Um, Pressure's good. Um, you know, a bunch of the like the first story's all pretty well done. Uh, I liked, I guess, a couple of them from Haps. <laughs> like Help Wanted was good. I know. Haps was okay. Like Haps, the, I feel is the weakest book so far. Yeah, Haps is mid. Um, like overall, as a for book, me, like, yeah, I guess it is, yeah. Phobia made me sick, <laughs> which I guess good job to it for its good writing. Um, and I felt some phobia was it was okay. Some phobia was okay, but yeah. it was just mid. It was it's, okay. and by okay, I mean they're good, but like I mean something like from like favorite perspective. Like these are all S, A, and B tiers, really. Yeah, but I, I'm not like looking at this. And I'm I can't like look at this and point out one, but like that one. That one is my favorite so far. I agree with that. Okay. I have. Gotcha. I don't know. It's hard. How do you think we would <laughs> rank like the books, not the stories, but the books? Mm, the books? Well, you'd think you'd rank the stories, and then every book gets a rank based on what their stories earned. So. I mean, you, yeah, but I mean, just like overall, as like each each collective book. I, like, I, I think I, you're right, Inky, that the first book is the best. I am gonna disagree. I don't. I like. I like for future books. I liked. Um, uh, let's see, Somnophobia, the book, and Submechanophobia, like a lot more than I, uh, mm. Haps or, or Lally's game. I'd say one, three, four, two. For me, it is from bottom to top. Uh, Haps, um, Somnophobia, Submechanophobia, Lally's game. Three, four, one, two. Yeah, that makes sense. Gotcha. I'm, I'm kind of leaning closer to Underscore, where the one, Ooh. I don't think the first book is the best. Yeah. I just Stretch loved Some Echinophobia and Somnophobia as books so much. They had such good hitters. Pressure, Cleithrophobia, Bobby Dots, and Sub Echinophobia. Those are so good. <laughs> Why do you laugh at it? I don't know. It's just funny how you talk about it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you you picked some kind of phobia because of the frickin' mermaid, didn't you? No, I didn't. I actually do really love some phobia because it's just okay. better Felix. It's just better it, Felix. It is better Felix. Let's be real. I I, I didn't I'm send to, to Ohio, so it's not good. Does I'm, anyone I'm have? I'm hesitant to rate Bobby Dots right now because we don't have the second part of it. But yeah. I guess same with have the least favorite story. Least favorite story. I mean, lowest on my lowest on my tier list. I think I already I already mentioned it's somnophobia and haps are my two lowest. Haps for me right. without a doubt. Haps was decent and somnophobia was okay. In my opinion. Anyway, we're we're gonna do a tier list episode, so that's, Eventually, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. do we, so, we wanna move on then? We wanna move on because I don't know how much time we got left, but we got five questions. <laughs> we, uh, we can, can, we, can line it, we can line it around some. Psychic, your turn again. We One through five. One through five. Um, show me door number four. Behind door number four. Somnophobia potentially gave us an insight on the collection of Remnant. So as like a general kind of FNAF lore, FNAF theory thing, uh, how do we think Remnant, Agony, and Memories are connected? Uh, that's a good question. I still don't know, honestly. Memories are powerful. Emotions are powerful. Can Remnant you is the like. Question to me, what in somnophobia? Know. Well, okay. So for me, like somnophobia, it really showed, like, that memories kind of are are connected to Remnant in some way, right? Because 
the the memory was being farmed or whatever and he saw his dad and whatever and he kept using the dream sphere more and more until eventually he became part of the dream sphere so there's clearly like some connection there i think mm. let's see I don't know, cause I, the whole dream sphere. That is it confirmed to be remnant. I mean, oh underscores on oh, oh underscores yeah. back. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> what so we're do? talking, we're talking about remnant agony and memories. Last I checked, I told Ozone to uh, speak, Fricker. Why didn't you like Haps? <laughs> Because oh. everyone went silent. <laughs> oh. Um, I I just thought Haps was a bit boring. True, I put it in B as well. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, so we're talking about, about Remnant? Talking about Somnophobia and memories and Remnant. And it is so better. cool to know that Scott purposefully took out information that would imply that it was his dad's memories, meaning that it is indeed his. The book was edited. Indeed. Which is cool. That. You don't know that? No. Uh, new copies of the book have certain lines taken out that would maybe misdirect you into thinking that it's his dad, mem his dad's memories instead oh, of that's memories right. of his dad. I do remember that, yes. So, so that's cool. So how do you think memories are connected to Remnant, then? Yes. Are they? Are they really? Yes. I... I... I think they are. What happens to him in the end? I forget. He gets trapped in his own mind, basically. Because does he all, die? all the, does if he you think about, on? It, yeah, he dies because like the dog eats him, but that's like completely unrelated. Well, I think the it's dream sphere random. works without being plugged in. Oh, that's true. So um, something else is powering the dream sphere. I think the effects, course... the the effects are already too much overtaken him. Remnant and Agony are able to. Well, I guess we should just say Remnant is able to fuel things. It's able to power things basically, which we'll see more in the series, definitely, I, I think. I mean, I guess mm -hmm. it's I guess it's Remnant. <laughs> I just don't know. Cause it does, what's, it the, does... what's the difference between Remnant and Agony? I don't know. <laughs> people, are, I think people are starting to shift toward Remnant being the whole conglomeration of souls and metal and emotions and everything. Whereas mm. agony and emotions are like the real power of like the souls or something. These are these are tough questions. Like when I don't think anybody's expecting like. Actually, I do. Now that I think about it, I do think just with what we've been given in the last few years about how all the the spirit side of FNAF works, I think it is. I think everything we thought we knew before we probably can disregard because it's been leaning so heavily into memories and emotions. Yeah. Like, I think Frights and, I guess, Tales now, kind of, is just kind of explaining how, like, the supernatural stuff in FNAF works. I guess. And that's how Lally works. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, I mean, maybe, kind of, I don't know. He's a projection of Cade's memories and inner thoughts and... I aggression. believe in Lally Agony. Lag Lagony? Lagony. 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 Uh, Ozone is a Lagony. Lagony be believer. Lagony enjoyer. Lagony what enjoyer. Is, what is that? <laughs> every time you, every time uh, you're in a cut time, you miss something, and it comes yeah, back yeah, out of context. You know, you know I, I think Ozone is having a Lagony. I'm gonna. What does that mean? <laughs> okay, <laughs> underscore. Have, have, have a guess. It does not even apply to. <laughs> have a guess. Have a guess what Lagony is, underscore. <laughs> what is it? I, I don't know. I'm not that guessing. I'm not guessing. <laughs> if you like Lagony, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. <laughs> it's, it's the theory that Lally is Agony. I knew it! I just wasn't gonna say it. Well, okay. <laughs> then why didn't you? Because <laughs> that's cringe to take a guess and be wrong. Okay. Okay, buddy. Eat soap. Okay. <laughs> what? Eat soap. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. I prefer my favorite, sofas. My favorite threat. Or... Dude, what other okay. crazy cool questions? Underscore. One, Ooh. two, or three? Three. 
three. The Time Guy asks, will the Fazplex Tower appear in the epilogues or even in a game? I don't think so. Ooh. At least not in the epilogues. Mm, Actually, no. Not at least not in, in. At least not in the games. I uh, no, the games I think it's higher chance they'll show up in the games in the epilogues. Wait, actually, I yeah, you're right. That. I, I mean, I... like, remember FNAF VR, they made this big flat image in the distance of the um, mall being constructed. You yeah. can make a flat image like that of the towers. We're certainly not going to go in them at the moment, but, like, if everybody moved out after the Pizzaplex went to ruin, maybe they're empty too, and we can visit them a bit. Question. Imagine, like... A FNAF game where we're in one of the apartments and we have to fight Ooh. against the Bobby Dots. <laughs> Dude, we should cool. meet the Bobby Dots in game. That'd be so cool. I was just, I was just thinking about like if FNAF focused a lot on the movies, like, like we, we, if everyone's focusing entirely on the trilogy and we get little FNAF content like between that, I, f I think that like Steel Wool, assuming they get a lot more people or maybe even like other studios like t to take production even higher i feel like deal wool or just while the while we're all distracted with the movies i feel like a huge like actually good fnaf game could like come up where it's like maybe you're working at the pizza plex or it's like like something that like feels I like it so. Imagine like a, a playable collection of Tales stories, except it's not like the actual Tales stories. It's like its own thing, but it's like a sequel to wrap it all up. That would be That'd my be dream. Sick. Like a free, like I'm I'm just imagining like free control, like kind of like Security Breach, where you like you walk in. Like I, the image I have is just like going off the street and then going into the Fazplex Tower, like first person, and like being able to walk around. Cool. Well, like FNAF escape rooms. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I feel like, like if they really, kind of if, if, yeah, they really say, hey. if they really buckle down on something, and I think the movies being a trilogy is a good excuse too, because it's like okay, they're all they're busy with the movie. We can focus on this big project in the background. Yeah, I think so, if they did that, that would be really cool. And that's I that's the you. only, I think I think the Fastplex Tower appearing though, I think it's possible for both, but low for both in my opinion. Um, I know we talked about the epilogues having maybe like a time skip, maybe. What if someone ended up working at, like, the Fastplex Tower? In That'd the be epilogues? interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. I... Sorry, I was just, I was just in thought. It was just like, I feel like we're gonna see like a lot more of the Fazplex Tower potentially in the future of Tales. I like in the actual stories. Because like that's for like the employees and like the higher ups. It would be really cool to see them. Turns out the Bobby Dots are what are breaking all the machines that are killing people. Bobby Dots are glitch trap. Glitch trap dressed up like a maid. <laughs> glitch trap <laughs> anime girl. Honestly I could see the that villain. Thing. The villain of it all, glitch trap anime girl. Honestly, I think maybe. <laughs> glitch trap. Oh, Afton went through all this pain just to become an anime girl. That's why he started <laughs> killing children. Yeah. All those years ago. Oh yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. He saw he saw visions from the future. His future <laughs> I want to be an anime girl. I'll kill children. <laughs> anyway, he got a detailed set of instructions from his future self on how to get to this point. <laughs> Thank you. Question one or question two? Um, um, one. One, okay. So, a quick one, I think. In Pressure, Golden Freddy was mentioned. And we didn't really talk that much about him in the end. Right. So, That's a good point. I, I feel like... It, this might be a stupid question, but, like, how does Fazbear Entertainment know about him? Like, mm. it, it was, Golden like, Freddy. a very personal thing to Michael, right? So... It seemed to be, yeah. Wait, so you're saying how does... Okay, I missed Part a bit of... of the start. I'm sorry. It's it's uh, Sorry, uh, in Pressure, we hear about Golden Freddy, right? He He's one of the suits. So Something how does Fazbear Entertainment know this. about him? Maybe Cause... it's just like an urban legend. Well, it, I think so. What's super weird about this is that what we knew from VR is that they shouldn't know about him. He's exactly. not in VR. They don't yeah. know who the character is. I think it could be just chalked up to 
the VR game is an adaptation of the games. Steve Snodgrass doesn't know about Golden Freddy, but Golden Freddy in the Fazbear mythos is still kind of like a, oh, spooky. Like, yeah, it's personal to Mike because, like, he's the only one who saw it, like, moving around. But I still feel like people could see an abandoned Fredbear suit and be like, ooh, that's a Golden Freddy. And, like, that's a good point. Yeah. Is it mythos or is it just like, uh, is he? J- I- I'm wondering if he's treated as a ghost or like a run of the mill Springlock suit. Possibly both. Um, I'm leaning more towards ghost because it's kind of treated like an urban legend in the role play thing, right? Hmm. Briefly. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, for me, I can just explain that by saying that it's just kind of like a. Just a Fazbear urban legend. Yeah. An Urbear legend. Urbear legend, sure. Oh, we'll I see what that. you did there. <laughs> oh, do you? Do you, Ozone? <laughs> do we have any more thoughts on that? Or are we moving on to our final question? Uh, let's move on to our final question. Do I get to pick which this time? Is... <laughs> I, oh, I get... yeah, yeah. Okay, what are my options? One, one or one? Ooh, I'll pick one. <laughs> one. I'll pick one. I, I get that reference. The Sonic reference. Anyway. Um, uh, one. So this question is by Duckman, and he asks, uh, uh, B7 is getting a sequel story. Why specifically B7, and how could that be important? That's a good oh, question. Oh, tough subject. Um, I don't know what they could be building up B7 for. I mean, it's a popular story, so... From the meta perspective, I can see why maybe it would be getting a sequel, but for an in lore reason, because B7 no clue whether oh. like he's so disconnected. I know why. Why? B seven's the animatronic in the epilogues, of course. Imagine, <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, we uh, we didn't really problem. see this coming, right? Like the B seven seemed to have like a very clear ending. Right. That wasn't going to be elaborated on, but now we see there's going to be more to it. <laughs> oh, underscore? <laughs> Parker Blair talks about feet. What? What is this? This is what the B7 cover is. I like B7 how is on B7 podcast, looking for the dogs. We have a bunch of theories, and then it's just me who just spouts out just the most random stuff <laughs> with no thought put into it. <laughs> Obviously, B7 is the uh, animatronic in the epilogue. Duh. There's a problem because he's a freaking human. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> it would be impossible. He he's is... All robot I, okay. Now, but he's all robot he's, now. He's, no. he, can't all, he can't all be robot. Just There's because. still organics. Yeah. Doesn't he still have teeth? There's oh! Several. Are you saying Burn Trap is B7? No, we're no. not doing this. We're that, not doing that, this. That's what I said. Seven? That's Clownish what I said. baby. <laughs> Burn drop look, seven. Billy look at Afton? his look at his arm. There is literally just meat. Oh yeah, there are tendons. Well, there are, there is meat on burn trap. Uh, that's not what we mean. <laughs> look yeah, at it. He, it's not even a co- coherent endo. It's a person that had him. metal attached to him, and now he's dead. Yeah, he's like a skeletal. He's a he's a he's a body that has. He's a cyborg. <laughs> he's got very clean teeth though. He does. I wish I, I wish I had teeth like that. B seven protected those pearly whites. <laughs> um, are any other stories you guys think could get a sequel? Uh, Honestly, I don't think there's any way to tell. Let me see. If B seven two came out of nowhere, I think any sequel's gonna come out of nowhere. Imagine yeah. Lally's game gets a sequel. I would be excited and either really happy or really disappointed based on the results. I don't think any story we currently have can get a sequel, except for some reason, maybe animatronic apocalypse. That would be. I have no one clue why I think that. It. Wait, do we have all the story descriptions for every one through nine book? Nope. I don't think no. so. Eight's missing it, or nine's missing it, right? Eight and nine. What's eight? What's eight's cover? We eight B seven. Oh, okay. Eight and nine. Okay. What's do we know what nine is called? Nope. Okay. 
Not yet. It's gonna be something crazy. So it's so it's Bobby Dot's conclusion, Nexi, Tiger Rock, B seven two, and the ninth one so far. Yeah. And then probably eleven, ten, eleven, twelve. Um, yeah. So um is that is that all? Do we think? That's that's all I've got in terms of those questions. I think it was um, a very, very filled episode. Well, I we were gonna go through the timeline of tales, but <laughs> I I kind of overestimated how much time we have, or underestimate, uh, over, underestimated, uh, overestimated. I suppose. Pick one. <laughs> he, he estimated. Underscore, underscore with, stop with, posting Gregory images. <laughs> with with the phrase. He, 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 he. <laughs> He's chuckling maliciously. Gregory. Gregory. What will he do? What will he see? What will he do in B and C? Who knows? We'll see in the future. What, Let's what talk is about it? those missing what people on it? that newspaper. If it has anything to do with Gregory the or anything, let's just wrap up the episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing this now. We we need to wait. <laughs> underscore. <laughs> Get ready. Bad he's going on his uh, he's on his Joker arc. Actually, no, that's us. We're on our Joker arc, psychic. Get off the Joker we arc. Are. Why are we on Joker arc? Because we're like, we've been downtrodden by society and hate things now. Underscore is just Leg laughing. issues. Underscore is just crazy. Ooh, I found a really good cutout of the logbook cover piece. Nice. Look at that, Ozone. We should use that. Okay, are we gonna oh, wrap up or are we gonna keep? I think we're probably gonna wrap up. Uh, so, oh, so do you want to take the outro? Cause like this oh. is like. Oh. I I I am very excited for the rest of Tales. I don't know about you guys. Like it's looking, cool. looking, looking better than Frights to me, but yeah, it could go any direction from here. Did you say so and then like continue that sentence? <laughs> Underscore, what are you doing? Nothing. I, I did say so. Okay, because I heard it, it chopped off the very beginning for me. So when I I asked like, so was, oh, do you want to like take the the outro? Oh. And it just like you said, no. <laughs> <laughs> or no too. It was funny. And then you started talking. And I was like, oh, I, I think I misheard that. Oh. Yeah, tales is very exciting for the future. We've had some great books so far, but it can only get better. Um, I no. <laughs> Uh, that's a bold claim. That's a bold claim I, right there. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it will get better. So, underscore, stop sending stupid pictures of underscore things. Underscore sending you... so many images. Oh, there he goes. Oh, Psychic, Psychic killed him. Removed him. Psychic killed him! Anyway, um, we'll see you later with no peace. No. How dare they kick me out? Say peace, quick! Know who I am? Peace. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, we we got him to say it before we said bye. What the frick? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness.